Okay, I hope the water phase diagram wasn't too challenging because that's the simplest that they get. They only get harder from here, okay? So consider this one. Let's start with the next more challenging. That would be a two component. So now it's not just water, it's water plus something else, right? Or some compound plus some other compound. And we're gonna start with an isomorphous binary alloy. Isomorphous, what does that mean? So iso, and every time you see iso, it means the same. And morph means structure, so the same structure. So if you had water and something else that had the exact same structure as water but wasn't water, then this is a candidate for an isomorphous binary uh, alloy, okay? Uh, so does sugar in water fit this description, right? Sugar in water. So let's sketch it. We're gonna plot on the y-axis, we're gonna plot temperature now. And on the x-axis, we're gonna plot the fraction of sugar in water. So let's do it by weight percent. So this is our weight percent of sugar, right? So over here, this would be 100% H2O, right? And over here, this would be 100% uh, sugar, okay? Still temperature, right? It's temperature on the y-axis, but you see that we're going from pure water all the way over to pure sugar, okay? So if we were to draw this phase diagram, what do you know from your experience? Um, sugar and water, are they completely soluble in one with another, right? Because that's one aspect of an isomorphous binary alloy is that they have to be completely soluble in one another. Um, no, your gut feeling probably says, no, they're not completely soluble. There exists a line, which is a function of temperature, and to the left of it we get what's called syrup, right? Sugar dissolved in water, okay? But if you're like my kid making uh, Kool-Aid, he cannot resist adding way more sugar than can actually be dissolved into this Kool-Aid, right? And so over here you end up with syrup plus sugar. So it's still syrup, like there's a certain amount of sugar that's dissolved in the water, and there's a bunch of it that just isn't dissolved if you cross over that line. So this line, this is the key feature in this diagram here. It represents a boundary, right? And along that line, you have an equilibrium between syrup and syrup and sugar, okay? And you know that if you do want to dissolve something, if you're trying to dissolve sugar in something, that you should heat it up. Most times when you heat things up, the solubility increases, right? Instead of being able to host, let's say, you know, this amount, if you heat it up to this temperature up here, all of a sudden you can dissolve much more sugar into it, okay? All right, so that is sugar and water. It does not fit the description of an isomorphous binary alloy um, because it has this solubility limit, right, which we've talked about. If you go to the right of this line, you've passed the solubility limit. You cannot dissolve more sugar in this water. You start to precipitate out more sugar, right? It starts to become a separate independent phase. Well, what about something like this? Consider the phase diagram of two metals that are very similar to one another. So do we have an example? Sure. How about copper and nickel? Copper and nickel, so I'm going to draw the phase diagram here. Okay, so again, it's temperature on the y-axis, and the x-axis, just like before, it's going to be composition fraction. So let's do weight percent nickel. So weight percent of nickel. So over here, you've got pure nickel, and over here, you've got pure copper. Okay? These materials are very similar to one another. They have the same structure. They can be dissolved in one another. Um, they melt at different temperatures. Copper over here melts at, I think it's 1085 Celsius. 1085 uh, degrees C, whereas nickel melts at a higher temperature, it melts at 1453 C, 1453 C. The diagram looks like this, okay? Now if we start to label this diagram, we would see the following. Up here at very high temperatures, it is a liquid. Down here at low temperatures, it is a solid. Why did I use that Greek letter alpha? In phase diagrams, we always label things with Greek letters, okay? So that's an alpha. It just means that it's all one phase of matter, and the copper and nickel can be dissolved in one another all the way across. And in the middle, this middle sort of elliptical region in the center, we would have a mixture of both solid and liquid, okay? So there's a liquid region, a solid region, and a liquid plus solid region. So this means literally if you take it to this temperature at that composition, at that point, you would have an thermodynamic equilibrium, solid and liquid both present. Just like up in the North Pole, you see big like icebergs floating in the ocean water and it's in equilibrium. It's not like it's melting or freezing. 
it's just in equilibrium. You've got the same thing here. You've got solid chunks floating in liquid, basically, or sinking in liquid, depending on their density. Okay, So that is what a binary isomorphous two-component phase diagram looks like.